Imagine that the United States entered into a treaty that gave a tribe a reservation. The tribe's reservation had valuable timber and mineral deposits. Later, the United States and the tribe entered into a new treaty where the tribe agreed to cede some of the reservation land to the United States. The treaty was silent regarding natural resources. The United States paid the tribe fair value for the land, but didn't pay for the value of the timber or mineral deposits. Did the United States also need to pay for the natural resources? Yes. The United States Supreme Court has held that when the federal government reserves land for a tribe, the reservation also includes the resources on the land that are needed to make use of the land. In this case, the tribe had timber and mineral rights on the ceded land. This means that the United States owed the tribe compensation for both the land and the natural resources. Outside of treaties, there are specific laws in place to regulate different natural resources on Indian reservations. The Indian Long-Term Leasing Act of 1955 governed leases on tribal land. If a tribe wanted to lease land for public, religious, educational, residential, or certain other purposes, the tribe needed permission from the Secretary of the Interior, and the leases couldn't exceed 25 years. In 2012, the Helping Expedite and Advance Responsible Tribal Home Ownership Act, or HEARTH Act, amended the Indian Long-Term Leasing Act and provided tribes with a voluntary and more efficient process to lease Indian lands. Under the HEARTH Act, if the government approves a tribe's leasing regulation, then the tribe can lease Indian land without prior governmental approval for individual leases. Indian timber resources are regulated by the National Indian Forest Resources Management Act. The goal of this act is to maintain Indian lands in a productive state and create revenue for tribes. The act also allows tribes to retain lands in a natural state when a tribe finds that the natural state is the best use of the land. In 1938, the Indian Mineral Leasing Act gave tribes the ability to negotiate their own mineral leases as approved by the Secretary of the Interior. Prior to this act, only the federal government had the discretion to grant mineral and oil leases on Indian land. In 2005, the Indian Tribal Energy Development and Self-Determination Act went even further than the Indian Mineral Leasing Act and gave tribes the authority to negotiate mineral leases without the government's approval.